Tuesday, August 29th, 2023. Topic. Jeffrey Epstein. Please pardon any visual and informational inaccuracies in this entirely AI-generated video. Jeffrey Epstein, a controversial figure known for his connections to high-profile individuals, had a complex background that included teaching at the Dalton School and his subsequent dismissal due to alleged inappropriate behavior towards underage female students. Jeffrey Epstein was born on January 20th, 1953 in Brooklyn, New York. His parents were Jewish and he grew up in a working class neighborhood. Epstein attended local public schools and was known for his intelligence and talent in math and music. He graduated from high school at a young age and went on to study at New York University but did not finish his degree. In September 1974, Jeffrey Epstein started his career as a physics and mathematics teacher at the Dalton School in Manhattan. Despite not having the necessary qualifications, he was hired, perhaps due to the unorthodox hiring methods of the previous headmaster. Epstein possessed a charming demeanor and interacted with his students in a friendly manner. However, he allegedly engaged in inappropriate conduct towards underage female students, consistently giving them special attention and flirting with them. Eventually, Epstein formed a connection with Alan Greenberg, the CEO of Bear Stearns, who extended a job offer to him after he was let go from Dalton due to subpar performance. Jeffrey Epstein began his career at Bear Stearns in 1976 as a junior assistant. He quickly rose through the ranks to become an options trader and worked with the bank's wealthiest clients on tax strategies. Epstein became a limited partner in 1980 but was asked to leave in 1981 due to a violation. Despite leaving the company, he maintained a close relationship with Bear Stearns executives and remained a client until the bank's collapse in 2008. In 1981, Jeffrey Epstein established his very own consulting firm known as Intercontinental Assets Group, Inc., IAG. This firm specialized in aiding clients in retrieving stolen funds from deceitful brokers and lawyers. Epstein referred to himself as a top-tier bounty hunter and claimed to work as a consultant for both governments and affluent individuals, assisting in the recovery of embezzled money. Additionally, he mentioned his involvement as an intelligence agent and even possessed a counterfeit Austrian passport with a residence in Saudi Arabia. Among his clients was Adnan Khashoggi, a Saudi Arabian businessman who was implicated in the Iran-Contra scandal. Epstein crossed paths with Stephen Hoffenberg through mutual acquaintances in London. In 1987, Stephen Hoffenberg hired Jeffrey Epstein as a consultant for Towers Financial Corporation, a collection agency. They later became corporate raiders, attempting unsuccessful takeovers of Pan American World Airways and Emory Air Freight Corporation. Towers Financial collapsed in 1993 as one of the largest Ponzi schemes in American history, losing over $450 million. Hoffenberg claimed Epstein was involved in the scheme, but Epstein left the company in 1989 and was never charged. It is unclear if Epstein acquired any stolen funds from the Ponzi scheme. In 1988, Jeffrey Epstein established his financial management firm, J. Epstein & Company, with the purpose of overseeing the assets of clients possessing a net worth exceeding $1 billion. However, there are skeptics who question the validity of this assertion. It is widely known that Epstein's sole billionaire client was Leslie Wexner, the chairman and CEO of L Brands. Wexner entrusted Epstein with the role of his financial advisor, granting him full power of attorney over his affairs. Epstein assumed responsibility for managing Wexner's wealth and various undertakings, including the construction of his yacht. In 1996, Epstein rebranded his firm as the Financial Trust Company and relocated it to the U.S. Virgin Islands to benefit from tax advantages. In 2003, Jeffrey Epstein attempted to acquire New York Magazine, but the ultimate buyer was Bruce Wasserstein. In 2004, Epstein and Mortimer Zuckerman invested in Radar, a celebrity magazine founded by Mayor Roshan. However, the magazine folded after three print issues and transitioned to an online-only format. Epstein was the president of Liquid Funding Limited, a company that played a role in expanding the types of debt accepted on the repo market. Liquid Funding used commercial mortgages and investment-grade residential mortgages bundled into complex securities as underlying collateral. The credit rating agencies gave these securities a high AAA rating, but their inaccurate ratings led to the collapse of Bear Stearns and the subsequent financial crisis. 
If liquid funding held these securities as collateral, it could have suffered significant losses. Between 2002 and 2005, Jeffrey Epstein invested $80 million in the D.B. Zwern Special Opportunities Fund, which focused on illiquid debt securities. However, when Epstein attempted to redeem his investment in 2006, his request was denied. The fund ultimately closed in 2008, and all remaining assets, including Epstein's investment, were transferred to Fortress Investment Group. Epstein later engaged in arbitration with Fortress, but the final outcome remains undisclosed. Additionally, in 2006, Epstein invested $57 million in the Bear Stearns hedge fund, which unfortunately collapsed in 2007. It is worth noting that during this period, Epstein was involved in negotiations for a plea deal related to charges of engaging in sexual activities with minors. Allegedly, he provided information to prosecutors in exchange for potential leniency. In 2015, it was reported that Jeffrey Epstein invested in the Israeli startup Carbine, formerly known as Reporty Homeland Security. The company was connected to Israel's defense industry and was headed by former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak. Epstein and Barak had a close relationship, and Epstein provided lodging for Barak in one of his Manhattan apartments. Epstein had previous involvement with Israel's research and military sector, visiting research scientists and military bases in 2008. Epstein allegedly installed concealed cameras in various locations on his properties to record sexual activity with underage girls by prominent individuals for criminal purposes such as blackmail. Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein's girlfriend, claimed that his private island was fully wired for video surveillance. Hidden cameras were discovered in his Palm Beach residence during a police raid, and his New York mansion was extensively wired with a video surveillance system. Epstein also allegedly lent girls to powerful people to gain possible blackmail material, and he claimed to have dirt on powerful individuals' sexual proclivities and drug use. In March 2005, a woman contacted the Palm Beach Police Department in Florida, alleging that her 14-year-old stepdaughter had been taken to Jeffrey Epstein's mansion and paid to strip and massage him. This led to a 13-month undercover investigation by the police, who found evidence of Epstein paying underage girls for sexual acts. The FBI also became involved. Epstein's home was searched, revealing hidden cameras and photos of girls. The investigation identified numerous victims, and Epstein was eventually arrested on state felony charges in 2006. In 2006, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, also known as the FBI, initiated an inquiry into Jeffrey Epstein. This led to a 53-page indictment being filed in 2007. However, a negotiated agreement was reached by Alexander Acosta, who served as the United States Attorney for the Southern District of Florida, granting Epstein and his co-conspirators immunity from federal charges. Consequently, this agreement effectively halted the FBI's investigation and sealed the aforementioned indictment. Acosta later stated that he offered a lenient plea deal due to information suggesting Epstein had connections to intelligence agencies. Nevertheless, the plea deal received criticism for infringing upon the rights of the victims, and an internal review determined that Acosta exercised poor judgment in approving it. In 2008, Jeffrey Epstein pleaded guilty to procuring prostitution from a minor and received a sentence of 18 months in prison. However, he was permitted to serve his sentence in a private section of the Palm Beach County stockade and was granted privileges for work release, which went against the policies of the sheriff's office. Epstein's cell door remained unlocked, he had access to various amenities, and his office was under the surveillance of deputies who were paid by him. After serving 13 months, he was released on probation and allowed to travel on his personal jet. Despite being a registered sex offender, he faced minimal enforcement of regulations. The immunity agreement and lenient treatment of Jeffrey Epstein sparked public controversy. The Palm Beach police chief accused the state of favoring Epstein, and the Miami Herald criticized U.S. Attorney Acosta for giving him a favorable deal. After Epstein's arrest on sex trafficking charges, Acosta resigned as Secretary of Labor. Some individuals and institutions returned donations received from Epstein, while others faced scrutiny for keeping them. Epstein's former house manager, Alfredo Rodriguez, was sentenced for obstructing justice by withholding and attempting to sell a journal containing valuable information for the case. In 2008, an anonymous woman referred to as Jane Doe No. 2 filed a civil lawsuit against Epstein, seeking $50 million in damages. She alleged that she was recruited at the age of 16 to provide him with a massage. 
According to her claims, Epstein exposed himself to her, engaged in sexual intercourse, and then paid her $200. Another woman also filed a similar lawsuit during this period. Unfortunately, these lawsuits, along with others, were eventually dismissed. Epstein chose to settle with numerous alleged victims outside of court. In December 2014, two women filed a federal civil suit against the United States, alleging violations of the Crime Victims' Rights Act in relation to the plea agreement between the U.S. Department of Justice and Jeffrey Epstein. The suit aimed to vacate the plea agreement, claiming it violated victims' rights. The case also involved allegations against Alan Dershowitz, which were later stricken from the record. The lawsuit is still pending, and in 2019, a judge ruled that federal prosecutors had violated the law by not notifying victims before Epstein's guilty plea. In a 2014 court filing, Virginia Jeffrey alleged that she was sexually trafficked by Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell at the age of 17. She claimed that she was used by Epstein, Maxwell, Prince Andrew, and Alan Dershowitz, among others. Jeffrey also alleged physical and sexual abuse by Epstein, Maxwell, and others, and suggested that the Federal Bureau of Investigation may have covered up the crimes. Epstein settled with Jeffrey out of court, while Dershowitz faced a defamation suit. These accusations have not been proven in court. In September 2015, Virginia Jeffrey sued Ghislaine Maxwell for defamation after Maxwell made comments about Jeffrey's allegations. The case was settled under seal in May 2017. The Miami Herald and others filed to have the documents unsealed, but their request was initially dismissed. However, the U.S. Court of Appeals later ordered the documents to be unsealed with redactions. In Jeffrey's testimony, she claimed to have been directed by Maxwell to engage in sexual activities with various individuals, but none of these men have been indicted or sued for related sex crimes. On August 9, 2019, 2,000 pages of previously sealed documents were released, and additional sealed documents are being reviewed by a federal judge. In April 2016, a federal lawsuit was filed in California against Epstein and Donald Trump by a woman who claimed they sexually assaulted her at parties in 1994 when she was 13. The lawsuit was dismissed in May 2016 for not raising valid claims under federal law. The woman filed another lawsuit in New York in June 2016, but it was withdrawn three months later. A third lawsuit was filed in New York in September 2016, but it was dropped on November 4, 2016. Trump's attorney denied the allegations, and Epstein declined to comment. Sarah Ransom filed a lawsuit in 2017 accusing Ghislaine Maxwell of hiring her to give massages to Jeffrey Epstein and later threatening her if she did not comply with their sexual demands. The alleged incidents took place at Epstein's mansion in New York City and his private island. The lawsuit was settled in 2018, and the terms of the settlement were not disclosed. A civil lawsuit in Florida against Epstein, filed by attorney Bradley Edwards, was set for trial in December 2018. The trial would have allowed victims to publicly make their accusations. However, the case was settled on the first day, with Epstein apologizing to Edwards publicly. The terms of the settlement were kept confidential. Maria Farmer, in a sworn affidavit, accused Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell of sexually assaulting her and her 15-year-old sister in separate incidents in 1996. Farmer met Epstein and Maxwell in 1995 and was later hired to work on an art project at Leslie Wexner's Ohio mansion, where she was assaulted. She reported the incident to the police and FBI. Farmer also stated that Epstein flew her sister to his New Mexico property, where she was sexually abused. In July 2019, Jennifer Arreoz served Jeffrey Epstein with a petition regarding a pending state civil lawsuit. Arreoz claimed that she was recruited at age 14 and groomed for over a year before being raped by Epstein when she was 15. She filed her lawsuit in August 2019, taking advantage of a new law that allowed adult survivors of child sexual abuse to sue for previous offenses. In October 2019, Arreoz amended her complaint to include corporate entities associated with Epstein and named two individuals as enablers. Three women, identified as Catlin Doe, Lisa Doe, and Priscilla Doe, have filed a lawsuit against the estate of Jeffrey Epstein. The women claim that they were recruited by Epstein when they were underage and were subjected to unwanted sexual acts. They also allege that Epstein, along with a network of co-conspirators, controlled and manipulated them. 
The lawsuit was filed on August 20th, 2019. Jane Doe, a New York accuser of Jeffrey Epstein, has filed a federal lawsuit against his estate in the Southern District of New York. She alleges that she was recruited by Epstein in 2002 and sexually abused by him for three years, starting when she was just 14 years old. Five women, represented by David Boyce, filed a lawsuit against Jeffrey Epstein's estate in November 2019. The women, identified as Teresa Helm, Annie Farmer, Maria Farmer, Juliet Bryant, and an unidentified woman accused Epstein of rape, battery, and false imprisonment. They are seeking unspecified damages in the lawsuit filed in federal district court in Manhattan. Jane Doe, 15, represented by attorney Gloria Alred, announced on November 18, 2019, that she was suing the estate of Jeffrey Epstein. She alleged that Epstein manipulated, trafficked, and sexually abused her in the year 2004, when she was just 15 years old. The lawsuit was filed in the district court for the Southern District of New York. Teela Davies, accompanied by her attorney, Gloria Alred, filed a lawsuit in November 2019 against Jeffrey Epstein's estate. Davies alleged that she was sexually assaulted and trafficked by Epstein in various locations between 2002 and 2005, including New York, New Mexico, Florida, the Virgin Islands, and France. Lawyer Jordan Merson has filed a lawsuit in New York on behalf of nine anonymous accusers against Jeffrey Epstein's estate. The lawsuit alleges charges of battery, assault, and intentional emotional distress, with the claims dating back to the 1980s through the 2000s. The accusers include individuals who were as young as 13 years old when they first encountered Epstein. A lawsuit was filed in December 2019 by Bradley Edwards on behalf of his client, J.J. Doe, who was a 14-year-old resident of Palm Beach County at the time she was allegedly abused by Epstein in 2004. A lawsuit filed in the U.S. Virgin Islands accuses Jeffrey Epstein of running a sex trafficking conspiracy for over 20 years, involving children as young as 11. The lawsuit claims that Epstein used his Caribbean islands to carry out these activities and that he concealed his criminal actions through a network of companies. The lawsuit was filed in January 2020 by the Attorney General of the U.S. Virgin Islands, Denise George. In January 2020, a lawsuit was filed accusing Maxwell and Epstein of recruiting and sexually abusing a 13-year-old music student in 1994. The lawsuit claims that the victim, referred to as Jane Doe, was repeatedly assaulted by Epstein for four years, with Maxwell playing a significant role in her recruitment and participating in the assaults. In August 2020, nine individuals identified as Jane Doe's filed a lawsuit against Epstein, accusing him of sexual abuse. The alleged victims range from an 11-year-old to a victim who claimed abuse in 1975. In August 2020, a woman known as Jane Doe filed a lawsuit against Epstein, alleging that he sexually abused her for more than a year, starting when she was 18 years old. In the year 2021, Kelly Brennan, who is originally from Long Island, filed a civil lawsuit against the estate of Epstein. She claims that Epstein sexually assaulted her at a club restaurant in New York City called Cipriani. Additionally, she accused Epstein of brutally raping and torturing her at his residence in Manhattan in the year 2003. In March 2021, a civil suit was filed against Epstein's estate by a woman from Broward County. She alleged that Epstein and Maxwell trafficked her and subjected her to repeated rape in Florida in 2008. On July 6, 2019, Jeffrey Epstein was arrested on charges related to sex trafficking. Evidence of sex trafficking, including sexually suggestive photos of underage girls, was discovered during a search of his Manhattan residence. Inside a locked safe, authorities found cash, diamonds, and a fake passport. Epstein faced charges of sex trafficking and conspiracy to traffic minors for sexual purposes. Despite his request for release on bond, he was denied due to concerns about him fleeing. The case against Epstein was officially closed on August 29, 2019, but the investigation into possible co-conspirators remained ongoing. On August 23, 2019, the prosecutor's office in Paris, France, began a preliminary investigation into Jeffrey Epstein. The investigation centers around accusations of rape and sexual assault involving minors, both under and over the age of 15. Epstein is also under scrutiny for criminal association and association with criminals with the intention of committing offenses. The French prosecutors are seeking to uncover any potential crimes committed in France or against French citizens in other places. There are...
Jeffrey Epstein had several long-term girlfriends, including Eva Anderson Dubin and Ghislaine Maxwell. Maxwell was implicated in procuring underage girls for Epstein and had a central role in his life. Epstein was associated with many prominent people, including Prince Andrew, Bill Clinton, and Donald Trump, but both Clinton and Trump denied visiting Epstein's island. Epstein also had connections with Steve Bannon and Bill Gates. He owned a private jet called the Lolita Express, which was known for its frequent arrivals with underage girls. Epstein considered relocating to Cuba to escape law enforcement. There are claims that both Trump and Clinton flew on Epstein's plane. The exact origin of Jeffrey Epstein's wealth is unknown, but it is believed that Leslie Wexner and Robert Maxwell played a role in his early financial success. Epstein's lawyers claimed he was a billionaire, but there are doubts about the extent of his wealth. Epstein lost money in the 2008 financial crisis, and many of his associates distanced themselves from him after his guilty plea in 2008. Epstein had offshore accounts and used offshore companies to manage his finances. His estate paid out millions of dollars to victims through a compensation fund, and its value decreased significantly in 2020. The Attorney General of the U.S. Virgin Islands filed a motion alleging mismanagement of the estate's funds. Jeffrey Epstein owned several properties. One of them was the Herbert N. Strauss House, located at 9 East 71st Street in Manhattan. He bought this property from his mentor, Les Wexner. The mansion is worth $77 million dollars, and is the biggest private residence in Manhattan. Epstein also had a residence in Palm Beach, Florida, apartments in Paris, a ranch in New Mexico, and private islands in the U.S. Virgin Islands. He rented offices at 457 Madison Avenue and apartment units at 301 East 66th Street. From 1989 to 2003, Jeffrey Epstein donated over $139,000 to the U.S. Democratic Party and over $18,000 to the U.S. Republican Party. He contributed to various campaigns in New Mexico, including Democrat Bill Richardson's successful campaigns for governor in 2002 and 2006, and Democrat Gary King's successful campaign for attorney general in 2006. Epstein also made contributions to other candidates in New Mexico. In 2010, he received a notice from the New Mexico Department of Public Safety stating that he was not required to register as a sex offender in the state, which contradicted federal law. Jeffrey Epstein made several donations to various organizations and institutions, including Harvard University and the White House Historical Association. He established the Jeffrey Epstein VI Foundation, which funded science research and education. Epstein pledged $30 million to create a mathematical biology program at Harvard, but it is reported that only $6.5 million was received. Epstein also co-organized a science event on his private island. The true extent of his donations is unknown, and concerns have been raised about the lack of transparency. After his death, institutions faced criticism for accepting money from Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein, a financier and convicted sex offender, had a strong interest in genetic engineering and artificial intelligence. He planned to impregnate multiple women at his New Mexico compound to, quote, seed the human race with his DNA. Epstein also advocated for cryonics and had expressed his intention to have his penis and head frozen. Some scientists, including Professor George Church, have apologized for their association with Epstein, acknowledging that they should have questioned their involvement with him. On July 23, 2019, Jeffrey Epstein was found injured in his cell with marks around his neck, it was suspected to be a suicide attempt or a staged incident. He was placed on suicide watch but was taken off six days later and placed in a special housing unit. On August 9th, his cellmate was transferred and no one took his place. The guards assigned to check on him fell asleep and falsified records. Epstein was found dead in his cell on August 10th, 2019, and the death was initially ruled as an apparent suicide. The subsequent investigation criticized jail officials for negligence but confirmed it was a suicide. On August 11, 2019, an autopsy was conducted on Jeffrey Epstein. The results revealed multiple fractures in his neck bones, including the hyoid bone. Although such fractures can occur in cases of hanging, they are more frequently associated with homicide by strangulation. The New York City medical examiner determined Epstein's death to be a suicide by hanging. However, Epstein's defense attorneys and an independent pathologist hired by the Epstein estate argue that the evidence points towards homicide rather than suicide. Jeffrey Epstein signed his last will and testament on August 8, 2019, just two days before his death. 
This came after he had been found injured in his cell and had been depositing money in other inmates' accounts for protection. The will named two employees as executors and transferred all of his assets to a trust. The signing was witnessed by two attorneys who knew Epstein. Epstein's body was claimed by his brother and buried in an unmarked grave next to his parents' graves in Palm Beach, Florida. The names of his parents were removed from their tombstone to prevent vandalism. Attorney General Barr ordered an investigation into the death of Jeffrey Epstein by the Department of Justice Inspector General, expressing his shock at the incident. He later stated that there were serious irregularities in the prison's handling of Epstein and promised accountability. The judge overseeing Epstein's case also inquired about an investigation into his prior injuries. The president of the Council of Prison Locals stated that prisons cannot prevent determined individuals from committing suicide. Concerns were raised about staffing and budget cuts in the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Epstein's attorneys alleged that his death was more consistent with assault than suicide and federal prosecutors subpoenaed correctional officers. Two guards were charged with creating false records and conspiracy, but were spared jail time in a plea deal. Epstein's death sparked controversy and conspiracy theories, leading to the creation of multiple TV series and documentaries exploring his life and demise. HBO is producing a limited series directed by Adam McKay, while Sony Pictures Television is developing a miniseries. The CBS show The Good Fight featured Epstein's death in its season four finale. Netflix released the documentary series Jeffrey Epstein, Filthy Rich, and Lifetime premiered Surviving Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein's name also appeared in the film Borat's subsequent movie film, where it was used as a comedic element. These articles discuss the case of Jeffrey Epstein, a convicted sex offender who abused teenage girls. They highlight how Epstein manipulated the system and kept his victims in the dark. The articles also mention the controversial plea deal he received and his connections to influential individuals like Donald Trump and Bill Clinton. Some articles delve into the career of Alan Dershowitz, a lawyer associated with Epstein, and the accusations against him. In conclusion, Jeffrey Epstein's early life and career were marked by intelligence and talent, but also by concerning behavior towards underage students. His dismissal from Dalton School led to a new opportunity in the financial industry.